My guy Comedy Enforcement has a video out called Andrew Schultz Addresses the Recent Hate. Let's check this out. This should be a good one. I don't know if this is actually true, if this is clickbait, but let's see what my guy Comedy Enforcement is talking about here. Um, I'd actually like to hear if Andrew Schultz is addressing the hate. Is he addressing the hate from the Joe Rogan episode or just in general? Let's see what he has to say here because this should be a fun one. So big up Comedy Enforcement. So for the past six months, we have been witnessing the downfall of some of the biggest comedy podcasts within the Rogan sphere, which has been pretty interesting to watch because unlike other podcasts or other shows that have ended because of disagreements, cancellations, or simply the whole... Oh, my guy's got two cameras, yeah? That AdSense money is hitting. Yeah, that Patreon money is hitting. My guy Comedy Enforcement has got two cameras. Doesn't need one. My guy's got two cameras. Big up Comedy Enforcement. Bad boy. Sphere, which has been pretty interesting to watch because unlike other podcasts or other shows that have ended because of disagreements, cancellations, or simply the host uh, self-destructing, the way the podcasts like Why a Mage, Two Bears, One Cave, and now it seems like uh, Flagrant might be getting added to that list, the way that they all have been falling from the top has been wild, especially because when you look back at the timing of it, it seems like, I know it's cliche, but it seems like the bigger they got, the more the more successful they became, the more the shows suffered. I don't think it's wild. I don't think it's a surprise. It's been happening for a long time. It's been a slow build, slow bleed. I think The Final Kid was the first obvious one because the quality of the show was, it just went off, it just, you know, died off a cliff dramatically. But I think they've all been bleeding slowly for a long time. It's not happened recently, to be fair. If anything, the normies, right? The regular people who don't tune into comedy podcasts have probably started to realise more how much dicks these guys are. And funnily enough, I think Brendan's to blame for this. I think when Brendan um, basically broke into the cultural zeitgeist, right? When he started to cancel Unique, and decided to kind of, you know, try to copyright, you know, claim him and shit and went through all that sort of stuff. And um, obviously then he got brought to the public consciousness because then, you know, channels like uh, uh, Moist Critical and a few other people started making videos on him. So then that brought a whole different eyes to the whole comedy scene. I don't think normies or regular people that don't really watch comedies were really that into the comedy podcast. But I think Brend that Brendan drama kind of, you know, um, turn people's attention to the comedy scene and they started to realise, oh shit, these guys are fucking dickheads. Um, because I think unless you were really in it, you really would have noticed it because, you know, it's kind of lame. But I think this has been happening for a long, 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 long time. I hope you had a good podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that uh, this was a growing podcast. <laughs> they can't all be bangers. What the fuck? Is that true, that graphic? This was a growing podcast. Tom Hanks for President episode of Two Bears, One Cave has 10,000 dislikes. You know what's funny about the dislike ratio? On my, on my screen at the moment, I've got dislikes showing because I've installed a plugin from Google Chrome that lets you see di um, dislikes. But most people's YouTube is just got the, you know, the likes because YouTube disabled dislikes to combat bullying or whatever nonsense. So I think because YouTube disabled your ability to see dislikes, it's probably encouraged less people to dislike because they just can't see it. It's not as fun anymore. So if somebody does dislike your video, even though they can't see how many other people have disliked it, that means they really fucking hate you. <laughs> because there's no incentive. You're not getting any, like, you know, you know, you can't visually see it. So if they... Oh, the only person I can see the dislikes is the creator themselves on the back end on YouTube Studio. So if you're really disliking something now, that means you really hate it more than before. Because before it was more like a group thing. You know, it's kind of fun. But this shit, 10,000 dislikes, sixty over 68% of people hated that video. Wow. Love it. <laughs> they can't all be bangers, everybody. Well. Sometimes one guy gets up and gets in his emotions <laughs> it was fun and although the podcast is still massively successful there is no denying that the show has changed and now for the better because again it's not like it's not as simple as they just got more famous and so they changed obviously not because i mean you can look at somebody like joe rogan who has been massively successful for a while and they never really changed the podcast the show regardless of all the other things they had that's the thing that people don't remember or people 
kind of don't pay attention to the fact that Rogan's generally okay. I know politically he's turned into a bit of a, an annoying guy. He's definitely leading into his boomer phase of his career. But overall, Rogan is pretty decent. He's pretty harmless. People really, you know, I think maybe his guests are the ones that kind of fuck him up a bit. But I don't know, man. Like, Rogan ain't that bad. I think that's why he's been able to survive and able to thrive at that level for so long. He's consistent. He generally has great guests. And the show is kind of harmless for the most part. That's basically why. And he's generally, exactly, and he's generally likable. Exactly, Brendan. The other guys, I think it's always been a bit of a fine, you know, it's been on a, it's been on an edge in terms of how much they liked and hate. I think generally, Brendan, sure, generally, Rogan is definitely hate, well liked. I, I think so. Going on, I mean, he had the UFC, the club that he was, uh, that he was opening and touring at some point. So the fact that he was able to focus and um put the the show first it's still funny that rogan has been on flagrant before he's been on the fire and the kid isn't that funny even though he says brian callen's his best friend and he's known Ro brendan for ages it's hilarious that rogan has been on flagrant but has been on fire and the kid if i'm them i'll be kind of offended i'm not gonna lie i'll be kind of even though i think he was in new york at that time to do promo or maybe to do a podcast i don't know or maybe to do a fucking special it's pretty wild just above everything else, does uh, deserve a lot of credit because when it comes to someone like... Now, Rogan has never been on TFAT K officially. He's never... When I say he's never been on TFAT K, he's never been in the TFAT K studio sitting down. The the episode where Brendan... Where Rogan gives Brendan the you be surprised conversation talk, whatever, to quit UFC, that was technically a the Fire and the Kid episode, but it was recorded in Rogan's studio. That doesn't count, personally, in my opinion. Um... If I'm Brendan and Brian, I'd be offended because he hasn't come, quote, you know, for lack of a better term, to the Thick Boy headquarters. He's never been there. He's never been to the old studio ever. And he's only and also, even if that was a Callan, even if that was a fucking fire and a kid appearance, he's only been on the show technically once in the whole time they've been together. Hmm. Like Andrew Schultz, it doesn't seem like he's following that example and instead is focusing on everything else and leaving the show last. And it almost seems like Andrew Schultz is now trying to take the show in a different direction. And instead of trying to be the best hang on the internet and focusing on comedy, it does seem like they're avoiding burning or wasting material on the podcast that they could do on their own show on stage. They essentially turned it into a male version of The View where they no longer talk about nothing for 30 to 40 minutes and just have fun and crack jokes. And instead they have the entire two hours, a set of topics, a list, a list of topics and you know, uh, the world events and, and whatever that they go through and give their takes on. Now, obviously that's not a new thing. They've always talked about politics. And Haven't they always done that though? This sounds like the normal flagrant episode. Haven't they always done that? and uh, trending topics, but now it's a lot more frequently and less jokes and more serious takes and all that stuff. And it's gotten to the point that it's now starting to backfire and Andrew Schultz seems to be not liking that feedback, that negative feedback. And it almost seems like he is in denial about a lot of the, the hates or the trolling and the negative feedback that he has been receiving uh, recently. When it feels too good to be true. Yeah, yeah. yeah when the say? story feels too salacious. The transmissibility, I was like, what the f Oh, okay, well, I spoke well, yeah. about that on Rogan. It's so funny. People refuse. People, this is how echo, this is how terrifying echo chambers are. I spoke about Rogan and I spoke about it, I thought, quite comprehensively. I was like, guys, this is not by design by the administration. They don't, I doubt they even want this. Mm -hmm. They double down on it, but. They, they double down on it because it was already a thing. A thing. They didn't. Right, like if it wasn't a thing, they wouldn't have doubled down on it. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't have switched it to replace Easter. They wouldn't go, we have a better day. Mm -hmm. But it just so happened that it landed on the same day as Easter and they're like, Fuck, we gotta, right? I had Twitter accounts going, this is wrong. Just flat out what, what Andrew is saying here is wrong. Hmm. No explanation or anything. Yeah. And it's not wrong. It's actually right what mm -hmm. we're saying. The date was decided 15 years ago. They acknowledged it, what, seven years ago or so maybe it was three or whatever the f it was. But still, I 100% get that and I understand the frustration, but it's those accounts that profit off of or brand around these ideas going out of their way to discredit, because I'm on this big platform, I'm on Rogan, and we're having this conversation that is nuanced and they feel the need to discredit it <laughs> mm -hmm. because it goes against- We've all been there, we've all been there. 
when your boy just is waffling and you you suddenly lose interest you suddenly start thinking about is the cooker on at home should you go and pick up some spinach on the way back home from home uh what what did your wife want again should you call your mom like your mind just wanders quickly you just like you just have to fix yourself up you know pick yourself up again and then focus again <laughs> <laughs> he's so tapped out look at his face he's like bruh what's this guy waffling about man what the fuck is he waffling about <laughs> he's so tapped out and it's a narrative that they have put out there in the world knowing that it's fake mm -hmm. he, he looks at the watch as well he's, he looked at his watch he looked at his watch he's definitely tired he's definitely over it bro because it goes mm. against the narrative that they have put out there in the world, Look, knowing that it's clouds. fake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. Mm -hmm. I, I just couldn't believe it. I thought this one was going to be one where, okay, we just ignore it. By we, I mean they. Mm -hmm. They just ignore it. They're like, oh, let's just ignore this one. Yeah, this is kind of true. We kind of... Big up, big up, big up. I did nothing wrong. I did everything right. <laughs> Nuance. PP <laughs> blinders. Hair shorts. Exactly. Exactly. Pick up and change. Yeah, another one. Yeah, I did nothing wrong. I did everything correct. But yo, look at this screen grab. Look at this pause. Jesus Christ. Look at that face. Yeah, big up Angel Angel. Appreciate you. Exactly. I did nothing wrong. I did everything correct. Oh, fuck DSP, man. Hope he loses it all. Big up Angel Ranger. Kind of ran with this thing but it's, it's kind of now andrew schultz was talking about his most recent appearance on the joe rogan experience which was pretty boring i mean i watched the entire thing <laughs> the two camera fingers hilarious honestly comedy enforcement i love you man but this is this is over this is overboard you don't need to camera switch for this do you come on <laughs> <laughs> his most recent appearance on the joe rogan experience which was pretty, pretty boring. boring i mean i watched the entire thing <laughs> You don't need to camera switch for that. <laughs> Is that like your emphasis? Is that your emphasis, uh, camera? That's the emphasis one, right? <laughs> most recent appearance on the Joe Rogan experience, which was pretty, pretty boring. boring. I mean, I watched the entire thing. <laughs> big up, big up comedy enforcement. Go on, my guy. Let me, I've got to give this a like, man. Absolute bad boy. And although I understand that they don't have the closest relationship, friendship, or have the best chemistry, I mean, the entire podcast was uh, them talking about the same old talking points that they have brought up in the past. Schultz was acting like he was having his mind blown the entire time, or as Shane would call You know what? I'm surprised that this episode was the one that everybody turned on Schultz for. Because I feel like he's been way more insufferable and obnoxious and annoying in in other episodes with rogan i'm surprised this was the one that people finally snapped maybe because this is the first one schultz has done since rogan's back on youtube so maybe we saw more of the hate than we probably are used to but i feel like he's been way more annoying before even this i think i didn't think that was it was he was that bad really <laughs> to be fair i think he's i'm not i'm not sure about you guys but i think schultz has been kind of i won't say tame but you can tell he's been trying to suppress how annoying he usually is ever since that Shane interview where Shane kind of called out his epiphanies and shit. I think he's very self-conscious now. He kind of tries to like not do the things that he knows people hate him for subconsciously. So he's not as annoying. So I'm surprised this was the one that sent people over the edge. Call it a Schultz epiphany. And for some reason, instead of Andrew Schultz going on Rogan's podcast and telling him a funny story or a wild story that he's been holding on to, or even just a bit, um instead he decided to challenge rogan with some political takes which you know rogan obviously wasn't a fan of and didn't agree with and it ended up backfiring now i'm pretty sure that andrew knew that he would be getting some sort of uh of pushback but i don't think he expected that much and also i'm not saying that he should have gone to joe rogan's podcast and told jokes and try to be funny obviously that's not what the show is about but for example in terms of guests if you compare him to someone like theo vaughn who I've heard other comedians on their on their shows talk about how Theo is the type of comic to uh, burn material on a show, on a podcast that could be done on stage, but he just casually drops it on a podcast. Would like show. <laughs> Big up. Bro, make a gift list so I can buy some things to help the podcast. Until you do, nobody can buy you anything. Cheers. Yo, big up, big up, big up. Hey, Austin, it's, it's in there. The link is in the, it's in the stream chat, brother. I changed it. What you told me to do, I did it. Big up, Austin Casey. Appreciate you. 
The link is in the description. That link in the description should be the one that will get you to see all the shit. Have you got it? Well, big up everybody. Appreciate you, my G's. Mm. You see it, the link in the description is there. Amazon gift list. I edited it and it should be, it should work now. So this link, it, it should be able to work. So this is the link, this one. This one works, I'm pretty sure. So if you want, if you want to, you know, help out the fucking stream, then of course, there's the fucking gift list there. The link is in the description. If you want to check it out, it's all in there, but that should work. So big up Austin Casey, I appreciate you for the flipping thing. I'm much, 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 much appreciated. But yeah, if you want to help out, then obviously the link is over there. You're not obliged to. Just keep watching if you enjoy. I do this for the love and fun of it anyway. I do this for the love and fun of it anyway. But big up us in case you appreciate you, brother. Appreciate ya. Let's scroll. Well, where were we? We were here, right? With Theo. It was about. But for example, in terms of guests, if you compare him to someone like Theo Vaughn, who I've heard other... Really? It's still asking for your address. Hmm. Let me comedians on let me have a look. 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 Let me have a look here. Uh all my life. Um it doesn't look like it does it. But anyway, let me play the video and I'll have a look. I'll I'll do it on on the side so I don't pause so you guys are not watching me fucking staring into my phone. On their, on their shows talk about how theo is the type of comic to uh burn material on a show on a podcast that could be done on stage mm -hmm. but he just casually drops it on a podcast he would like show you know we used to go by his house and get stoned he was a substitute teacher right and he was also 78 years old was like, there any real teachers way too old <laughs> <laughs> is there any real, like were they all just like part-time teachers part-time should be in jail like what the f is happening right now? i'm gonna do my, my andrew souls impersonation <laughs> <laughs> I love Theo, honestly. I fucking love Theo. Uh, no, man. I'll tell you, bro. Theo there's that a lot I of perv. Him. Dude, it's the bottom of the where the Mississippi ends, man. It's where that is. It's very silty. Okay, no worries, Austin Casey. No problem. I appreciate you. I appreciate, appreciate you. I'll, um, let me have a look at it and edit it, but it said it works. So I don't know why. I'm, maybe it's not working because I'm on an, I'm on, it's an Amazon. Maybe it's because it's an Amazon.co.uk one. Probably that's why. Maybe it's asking for your address that way. Maybe if I make an American account, maybe it won't. It won't work. But anyway, I'll take a look at it. I'll edit it and, and I'll, I'll let you. I'll let you know. Thank you, Austin Casey. I appreciate you. Yo, Uche in the fucking stream chat. What's the deal? Uche in the fucking stream chat. The alluvial soil down there, man. <laughs> Don Dota, AZ, just write your address in the fucking stream chat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As if I'd fucking do that, Don Dutta. Who do you think I am? Come on, bro. You don't want you guys sending me fucking IEDs and shit. Nah, I'm not writing my address in the fucking stream. Child. Who do you take me for? But when it comes to shows, I'm not sure if he was trying to tap into a different audience, but he basically went on there, tried to make a smart argument or sound smart, failed, got a lot of backlash and then didn't like the the response that he got because his response to all of that was that everyone was wrong and they just didn't know what they were talking about i mean i think it's a weird hill to die on but it is interesting that he decided to focus on the people that were saying that he was wrong and trying to argue with him instead of uh all the trolling and all the hate that he was receiving on the comments and all the negative uh all the uh dislike did he say comments did he say comments at brendan on purpose let me catch that. You say a little chauvinism there. Wrong and trying to argue with him instead of uh, all the trolling and all the hate that he was receiving on the comments and all okay, the negative uh, all the, uh, dislikes that he received. Because a while back, his own advice to Brendan Schaub was to lean into all the hate, which is interesting. Unfortunately, what's happening with the fight on the kid, like they have a fucking great podcast. Like they're. No, they don't. The podcast is horrible. That's a problem as well, by the way. Forget Brendan being a low cow. Forget Brian Cannon potentially being a grapist. The main issue with the fire and the kid now is that the podcast just isn't good. That's the main issue. The podcast isn't good. Brendan and Brian don't look like they talk to each other. It, it, you know, outside the pod, it's not funny. They don't really have interesting topics. They don't really utilize, like, I'm a big fan of Sanaz, Shanaz, Sanaz, however you pronounce her name. 
apologies. I'm, I like her. I think she's really a good addition. I think she's one of the the better recent additions they've had to the show. They don't really use her well. They don't really use her enough. Um, it's kind of stale. That's the main thing. Apart from Brendan being on, you know, what he is and Brian being what he is, the show just isn't good. I think if the show was good, the hate that they get on the Friday Naked Sub wouldn't matter. The hate that they get from me or for others wouldn't fucking matter if the show was good. The show just is fucking pants. Pants, pants, pants. Hilarious together. Like right. Brian and Brendan are fucking hilarious together. And uh, and Brendan's like a really great dude. He's a, he's a genuine... No, I'm not... Honestly, it's not, it's not, it's not even a, it's not even a fancy thing. It's not even like a I think she's hot thing. Whatever. I'm not, I don't really look her in that way at all. I think she's I think she's smart, man. I think she's got something. She's got a little bit of a, you know what I mean? She's clearly strategic why she's there. She knows what she's trying to do. But she, they definitely need to use her more. She's got an opinion. She's smart. She seems to be she has some funny moments. She's a bit younger than them as well, so that can kind of add a little side to it. She's a woman, so she's got that different side of topics that she can probably add there and sprinkle in. They don't, they don't, they don't use her enough, man. Honestly, they don't use her enough. They just kind of like treat her like she's a mute. She's got way more personality and way more to say than Cat, right? But they used to talk to Cat way more than Shanaz or than Sainaz or Shana. How do you pronounce her fucking name? Cat doesn't really. Cat didn't really. You know, she's got the personality of a cardboard box. Bless her. Um, she's obviously making way more money for her looks, which is what she should be doing. Because why the fuck would you talk if you could just show your bum and make a ton of cash? I would do the same thing if I could. But I think they should definitely utilize Shayna's son as way more, because um, yeah, they could get especially with her sport knowledge. But I've got a feeling there's a part of me that thinks this is really maybe Brendan more Brendan hate. But I get the feeling Brendan doesn't really want us to shine, you know, because she genuinely knows more about sports than Brendan. <laughs> I think she has like a, a football podcast or something, right? I think she's like a some sort of sports podcast. So she genuinely knows way more about sports than Brenda. So maybe Brenda doesn't want to, he, he doesn't talk to her because he doesn't want her to shine. <laughs> he doesn't want her to correct him on something. You know what I mean? Maybe. But yeah, I believe in her, man. I believe in her. I believe in her. I think she's a star. Don't be, again, I'm saying this now. Don't be surprised. If you see say, Shane, how do you say a fuck? What's her name? I keep, I fuck, I keep fucking up. Was it Sanaz? Sanaz? How do you say her name? Okay, that's it. Sanaz Tav Tavasol. Sanaz Tavasol. Don't be surprised if Sanaz signs a deal with like Barstool Sports, you know, DraftKings Live, Kick, ESPN. Don't be surprised. You heard it here first. Don't be surprised if Sanaz gets a deal with a company. Don't be surprised. Okay? Okay. There we go. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised. <laughs> I see it happening. I can see it happening. I swear to God. And Brendan's going to be fucking furious if her fucking podcast gets a bag Imagine she gets like a $1 million deal. She, he's going to be furious. Genuinely sweet dude who helps people. He's the reason I got on Rogan. Like he was like, yo, you got to get this guy on. This is before anybody was looking at my shit. Like, mm. and that really changed my life. And he's just getting destroyed by that thing. I told him to lean into it. I was like, bro, you got to sell merch. Like anything that they do. No homo, by the way. No homo. No homo, because I know some of you guys in the stream chat have fucking got fragile sense of masculinity. But didn't Schultz look way better like this when he had this whole like might be Greek, might be Cypriot, might be Italian look going on with like the regular haircut? No. Now he looks so bizarre, but he obviously it's part of his look now to get himself clicks and shit. But he looks way better like this. He, should, he needs to go back to this look. He looks way better like this about you you gotta lean in and then i thought that they would appreciate that in one way they're like oh okay he's not ignoring and acting like this thing isn't happening this is he's like taking part of this thing and it is interesting that andrew schultz is basically doing the exact opposite and not following his own advice of leaning into the hate yo big up jack donahue jr that's true isn't it one of the worst parts about brendan is that he doesn't want anyone of the people that work with him or for him to become success more successful than him in their lane at thick boy that's the thing that's really funny though I agree with you, but he's also the person to run and take credit for people. Don't you think that's funny? 
it seems like he doesn't enjoy when people around him become more successful. Right? But, but, he runs and takes credit when they do. He runs at the chance to take credit. He grabs that credit with both fucking hands. But in the moment when they're getting it, he doesn't seem to really enjoy it. It's a really strange combination of things. Like, wants credit for putting people on, but then doesn't want to put people on. Hmm. And and uh, not avoiding the negative feedback. And at some point, even went as far as to doubling down. Obviously, not as not as bad as Tom Segura when he snapped at his own fans and called them out. But the argument that all the people that were hating on him or disagreeing with him um, were living in an echo chamber on the internet is pretty funny and ironic because obviously that's the exact same. Uh, I don't know. Comedy. This is a bit of a clickbait. Come on, comedy enforcement. Andrew didn't say that. Andrew didn't say the people that disagree with him live in an echo chamber. He said about specifically a topic. I think I think it was a trans topic, the trans day thing. He didn't say everybody that disagreed with him led to an echo chamber. He said the people that specifically disagreed with his point about the trans day and when what day in the year it felt. Comedy enforcement, I like you, but he's a bit of a clickbaiter, isn't it? He's a little bit cheeky with some of these titles because he didn't say that at all. <laughs> <laughs> same thing that andrew schultz is doing right now with the show because before maybe you could argue that uh akash or some of the other guys on the show would challenge andrew schultz on some things and have a real conversation and even expose andrew with like the whole tipping thing and all that thing that was funny um but it is now clear that andrew schultz completely blew up past everyone else and it's now by far the most famous out of the four so you know naturally I don't know. I've, I need to. I really big up him for mentioning this. I wonder what it must. It must be weird, isn't it? I don't know if because I, I, I don't have this. I don't have this privilege. I don't have this luck because I don't really have many friends, like real life friends. I hang out with myself to usually keep myself to myself. But it must be really strange for a group of men all around the same age to start something like a project or whatever, a business, whatever. And then for one person to just like skyrocket in terms of success and money, it must be strange to deal with, like to kind of handle those feelings. Because Andrew is like immensely successful, immensely successful, immensely more famous than anybody of his, than anybody else sitting on that couch. But they all started together at the same sort of time. It must be a weird feeling, isn't it? Like, how do you how do you wrangle with that in your brain like you know what i mean like he's getting a huge chunk of the pie he's making a lot of fucking money and you both started together you know and he's also your boss now kinda <sighs> must be a hard one to deal with like actually like think about it like if you're a cash i don't know if a cut i don't know how soon i don't know it doesn't really matter how soon he started it but you know you both do stand up you both do a podcast. On paper, you're both similar, but your bank accounts are widely different. They can't really tell him anything and argue with him. They all have become yes men based on what we see on the show because even though they might have a different take or a slightly different opinion, at the end of the day, they all have... Yeah, Super Jello. I, I think this guy's Alex. <clears throat> I don't know what this... I forgot this guy's name, but he's a comedian too. He has a podcast. Akash, yeah. The, I, I just... I can't picture this guy's name. It kind of escapes me. But this is Alex. He used to actually be behind the camera, which is funny. He, used to, he was behind the camera and now he's become a personality in front of the camera. I think there's too many people. I think he doesn't need to be in, the, in front of the camera. If I'm being honest, I don't think Alex needs to be here. He could definitely be sat behind, like Park style on Joe Budden. There's just too many people to kind of keep an eye on. I don't think he needs to be here. Make it, keep it, keep it to three. You don't need four to end up agreeing with uh with schultz or he has to be the one that is right at the end of the day this andrew schultz is wrong they don't care i feel like they convinced themselves that you're wrong yo you might be right I really, they're yeah, so I really truly yeah, I think they so oh that's mark okay that's mark gagon so big up uh vagabond appreciate it that's mark gagnon Big up Mark Gagnon. Locked in. Okay, yeah. I thought that they I were just... I don't think it's nefarious shit like that. That's the thing. No, yeah. I, when, I can't I think there are nefarious 
actors. I'm sure. sure there are some, but, but I think the majority. We were actually talking about two of them early in this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. J. Cole. <laughs> and also for the past year, oh, the show. Oh, Akash went for that low five there and Andrew pulled back his hand. That was weird. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. J. Cole. <laughs> <laughs> and also for the. <laughs> why, did, why did Andrew pull back his hand? He doesn't want to touch Akash. <laughs> yeah. yeah. J. Cole. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Akash pulled his hand back, actually. Akash was the one that like, pulled his hand back, and then Andrew sensed it. Also oh, trouble in paradise. Oh, big up Austin Casey. You're a fucking legend. Big up fucking Austin Casey. <laughs> You're a legend, amazing. Appreciate you, appreciate you, appreciate you. <laughs> big up, big up, big up, big up, big up. Appreciate you, big up, Austin Casey. You're a fucking G. You are a fucking G. Um, what are you saying? Akash is a side character to everyone in his life. He's a wimp, and so is Alex. I think, I think, I think personally this. Hear me out. I personally think. There's nothing wrong with Akash being a side character. Nothing wrong with it at all. Nothing wrong with it. I think it's okay. I think that people see a lot of people see people see a lot of people see a lot of themselves in someone like Akash because he probably represents a re a huge number of guys who watch pods anyway. So that's probably why he gets, you know, he's got a big fan base as well. He's kind of like the regular dude, you know? The regular dude, the regular guy. I just don't find him funny personally, but I see why people would like him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jay Cole. <laughs> and also for the past year, the show has been getting a massive new audience who obviously isn't a fan of what uh, Flergan 2 used to be and are mo and for the most part are just huge fans of Andrew Scholes and really, really like everything. Yeah, be up with us in case you appreciate it, brother. Thank you so much. I'll definitely post all that shit when I when I receive it as well. You're fucking G. Big up, big up Austin Casey. Big up Austin Casey. Absolute legend. That he does. And because of that, I do think his ego has gone through the roof. And at some point, even took shots at Destiny for no reason, which I think it shows how he feels that what he's doing is way more important than someone, uh, than what someone like Destiny is doing, which I think is silly. Obviously, uh, Andrew. <sighs> I'm not going to lie. I'm kind of bored, man. I'm kind of bored. Big up comedy enforcement guy. I like you, but this is a bit of a clickbait, my guy. You didn't really, you know what I mean? What you said you were speaking about wasn't really what you were speaking about. But, you know, you ca I can't hate. It is what it is. This is the game we're in. This is the game we're in. I'm sure I've done it myself in the past, but I don't know what you were, you know. Uh, uh. Anyway, let's move on.